everybody. Hello, my friend. Jillian Hello. Sackovitz, alongside my girl, Susanna Collins. It is Great. day 13 since Major League Wait, Soccer what? has been postponed. I know. Well, they say time flies when you're having fun. Are we welcome, just- welcome into our, <laughs> we're having a girls night because we all we know are- we want to kind of recreate that. And uh, it, a girls night would not be complete without Minnesota United defender Ike Apara, So he'll be coming up shortly. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I think Ike is going to be a fantastic addition to this uh, GNO. It's going to be great. Or G- GNI, girls night in, right? Because Girls in. night in. You know? We're self-isolating do you, people. Do you notice something? What? We oh, kind of oh, match. Oh, my God. Chill. Chill. Number one. That is adorable. Your headband is adorable. You look fabulous. Where did you get that wine glass? What is that? A friend of mine, shout out to Keely Ryder. You know her. She sent me a pack of four. Keely. Oh my God. Wait, you, you're twinning with your wine glass, which is just so perfect for this girls it's, night in. It, it's, it's the little thing, Sue. I'm and basic. I'm basic as heck over here. Um, you look you know. very retreat spa-esque. I am so digging it. You know, I've got the robe on. Yes, it's very comfortable. Um, got, this you know, is the first time up. my pajamas have matched in two <laughs> weeks. The bottoms match. The t- this is a big day. This is a really big day. I'm very excited for this girls' I, night. Um, can I just tell you, too, that we both were like, should we put our – eye masks on. So this is, this is a trick that Jill and I, um, utilize frequently when we're flying are these lovely little under eye masks that you put on right here and they depuff. And, um, I brought these to my little station and I was like, and then Jill brought them too, which I thought, I mean, great minds obviously think alike, but we're saving these for Ike though. We are, we have to save these for Ike. Um, I also, can I show you, I made popcorn for our girls night. Oh! <laughs> it's all gone already. <laughs> Can I just, just, just a okay. lot of kernels. I don't know if, um, if you guys are encountering the same issue. Oh, Hey skills. What's up? Um, Bounced off my phone. <laughs> this is an issue that I have, have found uh, something that I'm learning about myself during this, this sort of quarantine period is that, you know, I'm going to the grocery store maybe once or twice a week. Um, but when I do the inclination, it, <laughs> like, it's like my, just logic goes out the window and I'm like, Oh no, I've got to like buy all the junk food and Cheez-Its and Pringles. Like I really, I try to eat healthy. I swear to God, but my non perishables is like, and Oh my God, these jalapeno Pringles are giving me life. They're so You love spice. I do love spice, but I know my gusta. What am I doing with this body? You know, I, so it's not just you trying to keep healthy, but Hard. I was averaging a bag of chips a day. You know what it is? You go to the store and you buy all of these non-perishables because you're ready for the day when they say the yes. supermarkets are closing for a week or for two weeks. And then you also have like vegetables and stuff that's like going to go bad in a few days. But you just are like, well, I have I have pasta and I need but to I eat have it. Pringles. And I have chips and I need to eat those. All right. So those are some rabbit holes we've gone down. Um, I've enjoyed... <laughs> I've enjoyed some things about social media, the challenges. Um, I know yep. we've put up each other up to some. They're fun, but then other times you're like, I'm over challenges. It's just the it highs counts. and lows of this of this it self-isolation is. Is. time. But what rabbit hole have you most recently gone down? Oh God. Okay. So and I think that this is one that maybe a lot of people have gone down because this um was just released on Netflix. It's a, a documentary series called Tiger King. <laughs> I don't even, oh, wow. I don't even know how to describe it. Basically, I had no idea that um, these sort of private zoos with all these big cats existed. Um, But it's Mm -hmm. the story of this one guy's name's Joe Exotic. That is true story. That is his name. And then there are two other big cat zoo owners and they're all like in competition with each other. And it's got all the drama. There's murder. Like it's nuts. And so I have gone down this rabbit hole where I was like, where are these? Where do these exist? And I discovered that there is a big cat zoo in central Illinois, like an hour away from where I went to college. And I was like, how is this a thing? And there's like no regulation of people keeping these like tigers, straight up tigers in their backyards. And it's two questions. Bananas. Can we go? Yeah. (laughs) One, 
do. This woman up the road from me growing up, my basketball coach. Oh, God. Owns the two by two zoo a mile up the road. She had a tiger. What? I t- what? How? How is this? You passed it. When we went to my house, when oh we went to my, my parents' God. house, you've, you've passed it two by two zoo. It's just wild. Okay. And I will say, like, there was part of me, I'm watching this, and like, they've got like the little baby tiger cubs, and they're giving them like to kids to take pictures with. And I was like, I would straight up go to one of these just to have the opportunity to snuggle a little baby tiger cub because they are we'll put that on the list of things to do when we're free again but it's just it is wild and so this whole docuseries has got me down this like rabbit hole that i in a million years never would i thought my google search history would say like big cat private zoos i mean it's just it's it's nuts what about you this is uh far less (laughs) exciting I was extremely pumped up yesterday about printers and wireless printers. <laughs> I, saw, I saw your victory on Instagram. Oh, my gosh. And listen, feel good so, about that. As you know, I'm trying to stick with my, my Spanish classes, um, but also just like printing off some articles. I'm spending so much screen time. And I know plenty of people spend eight to ten hours a day sure. on their on their screens. But like it just wasn't working for me. So I was like, I kind of need to print this stuff. Trying to like do worksheets on my computer. No. So I got this printer and this is so boring. Like I'm saying it out loud and this is the most boring story I've ever heard. (laughs) And I just was like, oh my God. And there's an app. And I'm like literally spending an hour on the app. Like, oh my God, I could could scan from here and I could print it there. It was just like the sound of the printer, like everything Uh about it just really made my day yesterday. So I'm pathetic and that is boring and I'm sorry. Whatever gives you joy during these dark times, I am I am so on board for. Also, like the online shopping thing is a problem. I'm just gonna yeah, throw that out I, there I, as well. I know. Yikes. I know, sister. Yikes. Um, Yikes. Yeah, okay. And, like who knows when we can return this stuff, right? <laughs> like I'm stuck with it. You know? Yeah, or as here we go. Um, some other things that are potentially boring for some, but maybe not on day twelve or day thirteen. Uh, here for this. Yay! Uh, I'm ready. One I have for you is yeah. ahead of, oh, this feels like forever ago, ahead of Nashville, Atlanta, which was week one. Wow. Okay. So February 27th, I went and got Eight my nails ago. done before that game. Oh, my gosh. Regular polish, girl. How and is that still even I have, no, I have no idea. But, like, I'm making this pact to myself that I am going to keep it on, even if it is one little shred, until we are back. Soccer is back in seven-plus weeks from now. Is this disgusting? Is this pathetic? <laughs> Susanna Collins, are you here for me clinging to soccer? <laughs> you know, or nails? Um, I'm going to say I'm here for it because I think that there are, you know, quarantine rules are, are different than – than real life rules. So you do you. I think that's a good, it's a good little measuring post, you know? Like, let's see, like, let's see how we do. Like, also, uh, shout out to like, manicure place. But that is even still a thing. Mine you've came been there, off. Lilies. You know Lilies. Oh, God. You know what? That was like the best manicure I've ever gotten in my life. My my nails are, are toast, but I'm also going to use this opportunity to like kind of condition them a little bit, get them back in fighting shape because I've had so many manis, they needed a breather. But I am all for you hanging on. This is like all I have. Listen, listen, we, we're doing what we can. We're just surviving here. Um, okay, speaking of surviving, are you ready for this next year for this? Yeah. Because <laughs> I feel like you know where I'm going to stand on this one. So um, I have been paying attention to, uh, you know, just lots of lots of news articles and what's going on in the media. And there has been there has been a bright light that has emerged uh, during all of this. And that is the return of Christmas, basically, right now. <laughs> there are people in, it was um, just outside of Nashville and then a couple places in Illinois, people are starting to put out their Christmas lights again. Those Midwesterners. as a way to sort of bring people some joy. Also, also, and we have talked about this before on the pod, the Hallmark Channel is making their Christmas movies, their entire library of Christmas movies, which you know I love, they're making them available right now. 
uh, to, so you can stream them and watch them. And so can you, are we can you here tell if I'm here? <laughs> are we here for Christmas during quarantine? <laughs> Here for this is such a tricky segment during quarantine because it's like, do you really want to knock anything that works for any other human? No, that's not right. But let's put, let's be a little funny. No, I'm not. If I put up, if I hung up a Christmas tree right now, that would stress me out. It would make me angry and confused. I get it. There's no, you can't hate on things that help work for other people, but. For my household, I'm not here for this. I knew that, that I knew that that was how you were going to sway. So I'm not offended, but um, I am super stoked about it. Anyway, oh, you're such a jingle bells girl. You really, really are. Am. Love Christmas so much. Okay. Okay. One thing we're both here for: MLS ownership and TBD and to be MLS ownership. Stepping up, big news this week, Arthur Blank yeah. donating four, $5.4 million, Tepper donating $2.65 million, the Haslam family of the crew donating a million and a half dollars to Ohio, all for COVID-19 relief. Yes, MLS it. owners! Love it, love it. It is, I mean, it's the right thing to do. And there are, we talked about it last week, it's just... There are so many people that are struggling right now. And I feel so lucky every day that MLS is allowing us to continue to work, that I have a job, that I have a place to live, but there are people that are not in that position right now. And my heart goes out to everybody that are, you know, the stadium workers, uh, the people in restaurant hospitality, our friends who are freelance uh, pro, you know, in production, doing audio and camera work, like all of these people are are struggling and facing real challenges. And so, anything that these owners can do, I think, is so important and necessary and wonderful. And I just want to see more, more of it, more goodness, please. And one note on that, Suze, that I found really interesting is um, we mentioned we're happy to have work, right? And like, I kind of feel like if your work challenges and maneuvering work is the toughest thing that you have going on or kind of maneuvering work within your household. You know, we all have those challenges. We're very, very lucky because now this is something where people are dying. And if you have your health, you have everything. So to see these MLS owners also donating to Corona coronavirus and it's, it's great because now it's becoming and it has been so much bigger kind of than sports and, and stadia staff and broadcasting yeah. staff. And no, we're, lucky. we're lucky. We're lucky. And we're lucky to lucky. have owners like this. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Blanks, Teppers, Haslam's. Keep doing what you're doing. Um, on that note, on, on the topic of work, Jill, it's not just the podcast that we've oh, been yeah. doing. Is it? No. So MLS um, has been streaming some classic games for you oh, guys. Yeah, we showing have them on the MLS those. YouTube page, the YouTube page, and the MLS Facebook page. And um, some famili- familiar faces might be popping up in the comments. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, which is really, really actually fun. And it's fun to revisit uh, a lot of these games. And some of them, you know, I, I admittedly, I am, you know, relatively new to the MLS thing. And the, when I started working for them, um, I mean, I followed the Chicago Fire when I was a, a kid, but to have like that entrenched knowledge of it didn't start till I started working for MLS in 2016. And so to go back and revisit some of these games from like the early 2000s, the late 1990s has been an absolute riot. Uh, Can I tell you which one I did the other night? Yes, 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 yes. The 2006 MLS Cup. Now, it was ESPN and... Who pops up on my screen? Bruce Arena is the analyst. Eric Winalda <laughs> is another analyst. Uh, Dom Kinnear's on the sideline coaching. So good. Uh, who else? Uh, a young Clint Dempsey. A year two Michael Parkhurst. Jeff Lorenowitz. His hair was so Baby. much redder back then. He was Baby. on the bench. Um, yeah. D. Rowe. You know, it was like even before Kalen Carr. Like it was incredible yeah. to kind of watch this. And to see how far we've come, but then also to see all these people that now we see in media, we see as assistant coaches coaching. And it was a long time ago, but it was it was really fun to watch. And I was like, I I need to watch a few more classics. I know. So thankfully, we have a little bit of a lineup for you guys. Um, So on Tuesday, that is tomorrow, we're recording on Monday. 
in case you guys didn't catch that. Um, Tuesday, March 24th um, at 8 p.m. on the MLS site and the app, we have Toronto, the 2016 MLS Classic Toronto, Toronto versus Montreal. I was at that game in person. It's crazy. We were there together. Yeah rained on i mean do you, I, it was wild this was the eastern conference championships and it was like so mental super excited i'm gonna be in the comments for that on fox at 4 p.m the 2019 matchup between the red bulls and atlanta at night 9 a.m on to the end it's the 2018 shivas versus uh the new york red bulls Ooh, a tuning in that. Like, like one um and then on tsn2 3 p.m Vancouver versus TFC uh, from 2019, and then followed up by at 5 p.m. Toronto versus Atlanta. So that is on Tuesday, and so you guys like got that. you've got you've got options, people. Soccer is not all lost. <laughs> We're here for you. <laughs> now the moment we've all been waiting for: our AT and T call to the field. The other member of our inaugural quarantine girls' night. A decade in MLS, 2013 MLS Cup champion, and the reigning MLS Defender of the Year, two-time winner, Ike Opara. Yes! We're not worthy. And Ike Opara is wearing a bathrobe, y'all. Check this out. You look great. Do you wear that every day? It's a bathrobe, yes. That's not mine, though, to be fair. So uh, I don't wear it every day. This is a one-time thing. It's my wife's. It's too big for her. It actually fits me better. So maybe it will be mine by the end of this uh, a- a podcast. We'll see. Um, it's amazing, and we appreciate you just going full out for, for the girls' night in. Thank you. Um, is what we're calling this. So much appreciated, Ike. We're so happy to have you. Have to ask you right off the bat, just, you know, how are you doing? How is your mental state during, uh, during this whole quarantine situation? Yeah, uh, you know, personally, I'm doing all right. Uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I don't like to say homebody. I'm just more of a, an inside sit kind of guy. Um, so it's not altering my life all that much. But it is weird just not having or, you know, being allowed to really go outside. Uh, like I've went out, gone out for a couple of essential trips and it's, it, it, it feels like you're going to the casino, like, it, like you shouldn't be there. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, it's like, uh, I feel sketch right now. Like, I shouldn't be outside. Um, so, um, but, you know, I'm, doing all right. I'm picking up a couple of hobbies that I've uh, been tr- attempting. So What hobbies? Tell us. Enlighten us. We saw, I saw a ukulele video on yeah. your Instagram with your wife. You guys were bomb. You were great. Yeah, that's the, well, she's better than I am. She was carrying me. Um, that's what I'm trying to master. That's my goal, uh, to just master the uke. Uh, when this thing's over, um, and we'll see, we'll see. Maybe I'll be touring soon. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I love like, that. Speaking of rabbit holes that we've all gone down, Susan and I talked about ours. Um, far less interesting. Mine is a printer, and Susanna's is a Netflix series <laughs> called Tiger. Um, but Tiger, one, Tiger one. King. That's good. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Woo! I got I'm three watch. in. In um, three in. I've Ooh. been. I've been really enjoying seeing some of the guys. Um, Andrew Farrell of New England he has been like being very emotionally attached to his um, piano and doing like some really beautiful solo acts, which I've been enjoying. Tommy Thompson has been putting out like some juggling series. Now, a former teammate of yours put out one that really threw me for a loop yesterday. I can't say I'm surprised. Have you seen <laughs> CJ Sapong freestyling? <clears throat> like rap? Yes. <laughs> no. I just that's the reaction no. we want. I, 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 I just sent it to you, but I'm gonna I'm gonna bring it up right here. I stay myself inside what to do with all this time. And so it is my mind that I just can't help but to find. Enlightened as I play my role, Aurora Borealis show, divine mother boy, he at last, royal game, Jon Snow. Can, can we please stop? It's, it's making me cringe a little bit, honestly. Uh, cringing? I, I, I'm uncomfortable. Um, I didn't see that, actually, and I'm not surprised that it was CJ. The guy has a creative mind. Um, yes. That's and sometimes it hits and sometimes it misses. Oh. Was that a hit or a miss? 
I'm gonna chalk that up to what I heard thus far as a miss. <laughs> but may, maybe I'll uh, I'll to, I'll give it a actually no I know I won't give it another chance. Uh, I'm gonna give that a miss from CJ. But I I love his uh his, his spirit to be honest. He he brings I you know. up. Well, so and Julie Ike and I were is... talking about it like no judgment, you know, from yeah. anyone during quarantine. Like whatever you gotta do to get yeah. through this, like you do you. No judgment here. It's a judgment free zone. So CJ <laughs> will not be joining you on your ukulele tour. <laughs> <laughs> he's hardcore out he, okay. the thing with cj is we might start on that ukulele tour and then we might end up god knows where um <laughs> so uh, I, i'm a i'm a little older now so i don't really want to end up where that could go so uh i'm gonna let cj keep doing his thing man he's uh he's always been a good dude <laughs> you're a married man veteran mls player now <laughs> you do you cj yeah for sure. Oh, gosh. You know, let's All right. Take a so, walk down memory lane. Shall yes. We? Go ahead, Seuss. Let's do it. Oh, wait. Look, there's June. Jill's cat has oh, made an appearance. This is always a very exciting time on the podcast when we get yeah. pets involved. <laughs> yeah. She's very, being very well behaved. Okay. So, Ike, you were on the Sporting Kansas City team that played in the coldest MLS Cup match in history, 2013. Um, Kansas City, Salt Lake City. Uh, the tickets were the highest price for MLS Cup in the past five years. The average ticket price for that match was three hundred and two dollars. And this was like these were two cities that weren't like major market teams, which is the yeah. first for for MLS. So I just kind of want to like, I want you to go back to that moment in time and just kind of like share with us like some of your your best memories from from that entire experience because it's wild. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was cool to see, you know, two smaller market, quote unquote, teams. And I always think it's good for the league when, you know, it's not always the big hitters that are winning. Um, but, you know, being a part of that final was, was cool. It was, I think it was the second year that uh, the team with the highest points got to host the final. And so it was relatively uh, new. Um, so being able to, to, to host it against Salt Lake was awesome. And for me, it was uh, it was a crazy experience because I was on the bench for the game. And so... I remember my, you know, anxiety levels being super high and through waves and, you know, going down, you know, tying it, they hitting the post and then 10 rounds of PKs. It was all over the place, let alone how cold it was. Uh, I remember getting in at halftime uh, and I said, screw this. Normally, like you stay out there and like, yeah, you try to like whatever, pass, juggle or whatever. I went straight to the hot tub being on the bench. I, I took off everything from the bottom half down. Got in the hot tub for like five minutes to try to get my legs warmed up just in case I had to come in at any point in time. Uh, so and it, it kept me pretty solid up until about the extra time. And I was like, well, now I kind of hope I don't go into the game because uh, I'm one of those guys that when it's super cold, I get significantly worse at soccer. <laughs> well, you're from North got, Carolina, yeah, right? I, 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 yeah, yeah. I've just got poor circulation as a whole. And so, you know, watching that game, I'm like, you know, going up and down in waves. And in my mind, I'm like, I've checked out, like, <laughs> let's just win. But I don't need to go into this game. Let's just win. Uh, and to see how we did it was wild. So, uh, you know, being a part of that was cool, especially with that core group of guys. Um, yeah, it was special. And that core group of guys got to go to the White House and meet Barack Obama. There's such a great picture of you standing actually next to CJ Sapong, I think. Yep. And also I love the group picture with Obama in the center and then Peter Vermees and the rest of you. What was it like <laughs> going to the White House and meeting the freaking president? You know, it was cool. You know, I, growing up, you'd always see it, you know, uh, you know, championship teams going to the White House. And, and so that was kind of a memory that, uh, you know, you've had growing up. And so to be able to experience it myself was really cool. And, you know, Barack was, uh, he was the man. He was cool. Uh, he walked around. He, 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 he spoke to us and, you know, gave us an individual message, whatever it was. At the time, EPB, uh, Eric Palmer Brown was hurting on on the uh, in the scooter and i think he was next to me and i told epb bro what you got to do is ask for free obamacare and see what you can get out of this and he froze up and i remember dying laughing like, oh, no. what did you time. say to him i don't necessarily remember but uh i i just remember like there's a picture i have a picture of it my i i, I go completely like try to be cool play it cool head turn swag whatever and I don't know. It, it, it was those moments that I don't. I actually didn't remember it until I saw the picture. I'm like, ooh. Do you remember what he said to you? 
He just said something like, uh, you know, what's going on, man? Looking good. You're pretty tall to be a soccer player. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I guess. I How know. were you? Were you? Because he's a pretty tall guy. Right? Yeah, he is. Were you like he as is. tall? Yeah, I was. I, I knew he was. I'd heard he was taller than uh, yeah. you know you expect. So yeah, I was looking eye to eye with them. So oh. it was, it, it's still you know surreal. Like you know you expect him to be you know five eight, five nine, five ten or something like that. And so to see how tall he was, and you know he had gone around the group of guys, and I think it was like the four tallest of us in a row. Like it was CJ, Ola, myself, and EPB, like all back to back. And so I think it was more of a general statement, but uh, <laughs> that he made to us. Uh, but yeah, it was it was cool. That's so it's amazing. Ah, oh, gosh, I love that story. Um, okay, Ike, you are uh, MLS Defender of the Year, not once, but two times last year, <laughs> being the the most recent. And you know, I I you're you're 31 years old, which like is still super young. Let's be honest. But like you know, in in soccer in soccer years some might say that that's like on the higher end of the spectrum so we just want to know like what is what's your what's your secret how do you how do you how do you keep it keep playing at this level that you do yeah i've just got a great support staff uh you know friends and family and and then the organizations that i've been with and you know how accommodating they are um you know i've got to kind of be you know, managed in a different way, um, just to be able to sustain the level that I'm at. And obviously you got to keep performing to be kind of, you know, rewarded that kind of, uh, luxury. Um, and so, you know, it's kind of a give and take, but, you know, I think that's being able to, you know, understand my body, um, the experience that I've just been able to gain throughout the time, um, you know, reputations that now I don't need to necessarily take every rep. Um, you know, Mm -hmm. I just need to take every rep as fast as I can, as opposed to more reps. So it's all about being smart and, you know, finding something that works. It took me some time to do that. And, you know, I finally had some little, little luck on my side. Uh, so now I just feel like I've really been uh, hitting my stride the last handful of years. Where uh, where are the trophies right now? Where do you keep the guys? <laughs> there's, a, there's a room that we have. Ooh, uh, a room. Uh, we should have had set up in, in there. Yeah, well, my, my wife is a pretty good athlete herself. So she's Yay. got some trophies in there. Uh, Who is more so, represented in this room? Is it equal or like like do you guys kind of compete over this? I need to know the dynamic. Uh, uh, I've been taking over recently. <laughs> to be I have, but she she and the one thing about her and I is, <laughs> I'm debatably a better athlete. Debatably, oh, okay. Yeah, it's not it's, it's not you know a hundred percent certain. She's got a lot of talent, athletically, education leadership all of it so there's like one thing that i finally have her in and it's maybe even debatable so um i just let the trophies do the talk you're like welcome to marriage give me this i know but i'm trying to beat her in something music she like the ukulele piano all of it i can't i'm just trying to get relatively close to her level (laughs) and i'll be happy Ike, you arrived in Kansas City uh, in 2012. You were 23 years old, and we had Peter Vermees on the podcast. <laughs> he was our second ever guest, and even through what? the phone, you know, he, he's an intimidating guy. Uh, <laughs> what were your first impressions of Peter rolling into Kansas City as a North Carolina guy, and now you are under the the uh, direction yeah. of Peter? Listen, he's a... Uh... I love it. I I loved it. It is as uh, intense, wild, almost evil scientist as <laughs> um, it did. I, it was exactly what I needed. You know that structure is what I needed. Um, you know his belief in me is what I needed. Uh, so you know, I, to get challenged every day was was exactly you know um, what I was seeking, especially for the the time that I was there and the age that I was at. Even as really unrealistic as some of the the demands were throughout the day, it was still building a mindset that ultimately set you up for success. Uh, my favorite story that necessarily doesn't really involve me with him is just uh, <laughs> when we played Portland in the uh, 2018 playoffs, the game we lost at home or we tied, or maybe whatever we lost in aggregate. He, you know, when Valeri scored his goal, the fan threw that beer at yeah. him, and you know the play kind of halted. And, PV walks out on the field, and as he walks out on the field, you see the whole cauldron pointing <laughs> at the guy who threw the beer. And I'm thinking, I, and I didn't see it really happen during the game, but I'm thinking after when I watched it, I'm like, 
this man has this entire stadium shook and on lock to snitch <laughs> on one person. So if they feel that way, they don't even know what we go through on a daily basis if they got scared. They're like, uh, dad's here. Right, yeah. Like, they were like, dad's coming. Like, watch out. And I'm like, man, this guy has really built something there. Uh, but he's earned everything that he's, uh, you know, that you know, we were awarded and achieved there. And, um, you know, hopefully they get back onto the right foot. And so. I love Peter Vermees. He's like one of these Sounds guys where it. I was completely intimidated to, to talk to him for the first time. And then when you, when you get him like kind of like not in a game situation or just sort of, he's so, he's like, he's lovely. He's, he gave me a tour of the training facility in Kansas city and was like, just it, it, he was so animated and funny and like yeah. cracking jokes and I was like oh my god I love Peter you Vermees. see this Peter the great. dad a little bit <laughs> yeah, yeah totally he is yeah totally you can dad. yeah you can walk out of a meeting with him and get a lot more confident or you can walk out of a meeting and then question what the hell oh, heck just happened <laughs> that <laughs> but, I, sounds like a uh, lot of thousand percent to be honest with you yeah you <laughs> just <laughs> roll the dice we'll see what you get like, should I oh, quit now? Amazing. Should I keep going? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Now, I mentioned before your podcast, the BSI podcast, it's been so <laughs> successful because, like, with Darlington Nagby would be a perfect example. This is a guy that the media want to talk to all the time, but to the media, he really is just one way. He'll give you a great answer. He's always gracious. He's always nice, but he's not going to let people very far in. Yeah. And you guys were able to get... And I love the story about, was it a Maserati or a Lamborghini yeah. that he got pulled over in the middle of Tennessee? And just yeah. to, even to see his own expressions, like that's what makes your guys' podcast so unique that you can really bring people into those conversations that go on between players in the dressing room or, or at a mealtime or whatever. But now you are the only current player as a part of that podcast now that your pal Benny <laughs> has retired. So I reached out to Benny and I said, what can I bug Ike about? And he said, <laughs> straight from Benny Failhaber, tell him, tell him to tell you about the time that he had to take care of my dog one week after his surgery. Ike Opara. <laughs> you had to take care of Benny's dog one week after your own surgery? So it was, it was, I was probably, I don't know, Three or four, three months removed from surgery, but it was the first week I was able to walk. Okay. So I had, yeah. Minor so details. I had, right. <laughs> but I had no, I had no strength in my ankle, no stability. He was at the All Star game, uh, and so <laughs> he like, wanted me to, yeah, yeah. He was at All Star game. And, and to talk. walk again. He was at the All Star game. <laughs> Pretty much, him and his family went to the All Star game, and so he he could have just gotten a dog sitter, but he's like, hey, just stay. Can you stay at my house? Uh, eat everything in my fridge if you want. Like, would we'll do this, that, that. I'm like, sure, Benny, I'll take care of your dog. No problem. So I stayed at his house. <laughs> this dog, he has a bulldog. Uh, this dog is so powerful. It was dragging <laughs> me up and down the street. And I couldn't do anything about it because I only had one leg. And so I'm like, I can't walk this dog anymore. So I'm like trying to find ways to like cut corners, like let him out in the backyard or, or whatever, whatever, or let her out in the backyard. And I it just, it's just not working. One night she's barking and screaming and I'm like, no, I'm not going out there. You, whatever you got going on, I don't care. I'm not doing it. I wake up in the morning, huge pile of poop on his, <laughs> in, the, in the middle of his living room. <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, well, that's probably why she was barking and screaming for so long. And so, <laughs> I, I pick it up, I clean it up. I never tell Benny <laughs> until like, just, I don't know, a year ago, like relatively soon, like recent-ish. I like kept that secret for like four or five years and I just didn't, there was no point in him telling it, like telling them. And so uh, that was my way of like. I, yeah. I feel like that's such a small price to pay just to poop based on the fact that like you were so newly walking. Like I don't, yeah. <laughs> I still yeah. feel bad for you, Ike. Like I'm on Thank your you. side here. Thank you. Yeah, no. Yeah, it was, uh, I, I don't, and, and Benny had just gotten like, I don't know, five, 30, like box or 30 quantity box Kit Kats from, <laughs> I don't know how, I, some sp <laughs> like, he Nessa loves Women. Kit Kats. Yeah, he does. Is it Nessie that makes Kit I don't know. Whoever sent them like five boxes of this. So I was just crushing his Kit Kats the whole time <laughs> on one oh. foot. Like barely can walk his dog. You deserve that, Ike. Yeah. So that was my uh, my Benny story. I've got plenty oh of Benny God. stories though. 
what a friend what a friend you are that's a <laughs> that's outrageous i love that they um that he asked jill to ask you about that because that was tremendously entertaining it's, okay it's probably um, the most pg story <laughs> <laughs> i feel like he should have given you a heads up about the dog though you know like this is like he knowing sh- that like the situation you were in come on now yeah well I mean, I knew we had a bulldog. I've been around this house plenty of times, but I just, I, I guess I underestimated it, to be honest. Oh, God. Okay. So, Benny, um, Benny and Sal had the podcast. They, they changed the name to include you in this, Ike, because before Very kind of them. The Benny, <laughs> it was just the Benny and Sal podcast, but, like, your interrogation part was, like, one of the biggest highlights of the entire, <laughs> the entire pod. So, I want to know how, how much you pushed to get the I into the BSI podcast. Yeah. Did you have to fight for this? Uh, it was pretty... Well, I think... No, that was going to always happen. I think it was pretty easy. It, getting my okay. logo was... Or my... my, my Your what, face. My, my, my Abby, yeah, yes. was, uh, was more of a challenge. Um, but, you know, it was, it was always kind of in the works, I think. Um, but I, I don't want to give... I don't want to roast Sal again. We kill Sal. Uh, <laughs> we really do. Why? I wish... We, we need to start releasing our group chats and just us make like Same. messing with Sal. Yeah. Um, because Here for that. <laughs> up until recently, Sal was somehow doing less and less with more and more time. Um, <laughs> and so I was always joking, we should take the S out or we should lowercase the S or whatever. <laughs> so, lowercase. Uh, but now Sal's fight been for stepping that real up. estate. Exactly. He's been stepping up. But yeah, no, it's, uh, you know, I obviously have. Uh, I think the the best part of the of the of the episode. I um, love your interrogations so much. Like they, I mean, it, it just every week you're you're really good at it. Like you know, like post soccer. If you're ever thinking of <laughs> you know a career, I think that inter like hard hitting interviews are are going to be your thing because they're they're really good. Um, and like you've you've interviewed so many players and like really high profile players, but who has been your toughest interrogation subject? Like who was the hardest to pull stuff out of? Um, here's the, like the, so with the interrogation, obviously I could make it absurdly difficult. Um, you know, and, and you know, that would turn people off completely who would be on. So you want to give it, you know, whether it make it into a story or a question that makes them a story or, you know, just like a little bit of a bait, uh, sometimes and sometimes you just want to make them feel the heat and uh, you know just get them a little sweat. <laughs> like, I think that's part of that I love is just like I know that they're feeling it even though I've already decided in my mind I'm gonna make it easier for them but they don't know that. Uh, I think the hardest part is you know trying to feel like you're not taking an advantage of you know so we had Carlos Vela and in you know English is in his first language so I didn't mm-hmm. want anything to be misinterpreted you know that could harm him or anything like that down the future but I also still want to give him. You know, a bit of a kick. Uh, so, you know, I think that's the biggest challenge, you know, trying to, you know, set people up for, you know, great stories, a little bit of a tough task, but uh, nothing crazy. But then you got some guys like Alan Gordon who you can ask anything you want and you can like, so you just kind of have to, you know, vary with the personalities of who you bring on. So on that note, I, I, I think you know this is coming. We have two games for you. <laughs> we will save. <laughs> Your interrogation is coming, so I just want to make okay. you nervous. Okay. Speaking of respecting and being nice to players. <laughs> right, right, right. Um, but the first game I want to play is just called Who Do You Like, Ike? And okay. that's basically to celebrate your decade in Major League Soccer. We're going to ask you about some of your favorite guys, kind of rapid fire, rapid okay. fire-esque. Okay. So who do you like, Ike? Who is your other favorite defender? To play or watch play or just like yeah, as a person? Yeah, that you're just impressed with. I will keep that. Um, th- there are two. It's kind of hard to distinguish. That's okay. Uh, well, Parky retired, so he's gone. So he would have been a, a top three. Uh, Aaron Long, uh, when he's healthy, and uh, Miles Robinson. Those are the Ooh, two. Good that. answers. Good yeah. answers. Okay, uh, your favorite striker, Ike. Um. Slash least favorite, right? Okay, so it's got to be Joseph. What is uh, it about him? I just, 
obviously I'm sad for his injury. Um, you know, obviously I want him to. Hopefully, everyone wants him to heal up, and he's just so great for our league. But it's something about you know when you play him that I I, I just get into the mindset. You know, 48 hours, 72 hours before, I'm locked in. Um, you know, it's just, I, and he's so hungry and wanting to score goals. And I like I want to match that challenge uh, that I just don't want him to score. It's almost like, you know, he likes to float to the back post. It's, all right, I'm going to run with you to the back post, leave the whole center of the goal open because I just don't want you to kind of score thing. And, uh, you know, it's like, you know, just great players like that kind of always bring the best out of you. And this guy just hits at rapid clips every year. And so, you know, I always try to, you know, do my best to, uh, you know, slow him down if I can. You know, it's not a very easy task. Your favorite manager? Um, that I played for, or okay, my favorite manager to watch from afar is Almeida. Mm, yeah, everyone yeah. loves him. Yeah, something about him. I don't know if it's the hair or the intensity <laughs> or both, but uh, he's got that South American flair that we're yeah, really got, digging yeah, in MLS. He's he's got something, and uh, I've he heard emotes. some stories. He emotes. Yeah, for sure. Um, okay, your favorite MLS away city. So the favorite, your favorite MLS city that you like to to visit. You're stoked when you get to go there for a road trip. Yeah. Um, I would say just to DC because well, DC because it's the closest to my hometown and a lot of friends and family getting up there. Um, that's up until Charlotte gets into this league. We'll see. Yeah. Um, but then I would say LAFC when we're in Santa Monica and the living. It's just pretty much a vacation. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's just good living out there, and you don't have to have any responsibilities. So that's It's uh, nice. It's all yeah. right. It's Before decent, we, yeah. we get to the last one, you tweeted when um, Charlotte was announced as, the, <laughs> as an MLS city that your mom, like all moms, are like, Ike. Hey, Are you yeah. coming home? There's a new team coming. <laughs> As a North Carolina guy, a Wake Forest guy, how pumped is the Ike Opara family about MLS to Charlotte? It's Charlotte high. To MLS. Yeah, yeah, it's high. It's definitely high. Uh, I got <laughs> friends. I got all of them reaching out. Uh, but, uh, you know, I think they're going to try to do things right, obviously. And, you know, they're, they're coming in, I think, wanting to make a splash. It's a great um, city. But, yeah, for sure. I just, I, I'd always been curious why people had said that soccer in the South wouldn't work. And I'm like, do people not understand that you know, like, it's pretty big? <laughs> and then I'm thinking of, like, all the collegiate programs, like, you know, Wake Forest, obviously, and, right. and UNC, and all the successful co- collegiate programs that are there. I'm like, people love soccer in the South. Like, what is going on with you? Sorry. Oh, just for a, sure. Just a rant. No, just a rant. Oh, I agree. And plus, if you market anything well, no matter where you are, it will always be, you know, better off so i think that whole combination was like i never understood why people thought i mean george is one of the biggest hotbeds for soccer and people were questioning you know when atlanta united was you know announced and right and and now look at that what they've done so um you know how i think charlotte's going to fit into that into that mold as well okay final question for who do you like ike uh who's the guy that you always kind of want to fight like the agitator out on the field that's just like bugging you the whole game (laughs) Uh, wait, can I think on this? Is would it be a yes. lot dead air? Okay. Um, you can think on it. We'll come back to it at the end before we let okay. you go. I'm writing it down so we don't even forget. Yeah, okay. We had one of them. We had one of these potential agitators on last week in uh, Felipe. <laughs> so that's Who is actually me. like such a uh, nice guy. Yeah. Like, off yeah, the yeah. Field. yeah I, I know that's a lot of guys, I think. Uh, but I, I don't match up enough with them to. To know. Right could be on your team someone's always like messing with you could like be. that would be on Atlanta I think a lot of the guys would say Eric Rometty because he's so he's like <laughs> he's like the little brother like he loves to like or when Parky was around he loved to like just mess with Parky like he thought it was hilarious <laughs> no I think I would get that one then I love to mess with the <laughs> team so uh just own it it's great um Jill are we ready to interrogate Ike Mm-hmm. Should, should we? Should we? Throw I'm nervous. It back at him? I don't know why. I know this is gonna be. F- I like the. I like the questions that we that we came up with. So, <laughs> so same same concept. I like. We're gonna ask you. We've got three three questions for you. Um, mm-hmm. and Benny and Sal did kind of help us here. So oh, if no. you don't, yeah, exactly. if any of them are inappropriate or too yeah. much, blame them. 
Yes. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but but you have if you get through all of these, then you can throw it back at us. You can ask us a, a question. So if okay. you want to plead the fifth on one, you can. And okay. if you get through all of them, you can then you know turn the tables. Okay. So got it. Fair is fair. <laughs> all right. We're starting out. I, this one, I feel, I feel like this is, this is actually fine. We want you to rank your three MLS coaches in terms of like who you like best, who you like best. <laughs> Easy. Easy. Um, or you can man. leave the fifth. Well. <laughs> <laughs> He's sweating. It might be the no, robe. <laughs> no, it, it's it's uh, I mean, yeah, no, it's it's, uh, you gotta go with and well, to be fair, I've been successful here so far, so it's the lo- you gotta go at least with longevity. So PV has uh-huh. to go first. Yep, and that's then Adrian, fair. and then Frank. Okay. Yeah. Um, there it is. And, and, yeah, yeah. And not necessarily Frank for a shot. I was just miserable in San Jose. So <laughs> <laughs> Frank aside, he had nothing to do with my... Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, Frank, it's like us with bosses. You know, so often yeah. it, it has so... Sometimes it has something to do with them, but it's also like your mindset, the success of the team, the broadcast team, whatever you're a part of. A lot of factors obviously go into that. And Peter Vermees obviously was rumored to be the next coach of the U.S. men's national team. So there's no big surprise there. No, yeah. I mean, he's a Hall of Famer, so it's kind of hard to... Love PV. <laughs> Love PV. Two and three was tough. Yeah. Okay. Um, most overrated MLS player, current or past? Oh, <laughs> dear Lord. I even look like sweating, too. Jill, <laughs> why are you sweating? I don't know. I'm having, like, an adverse reaction to this interrogation. You could never work for the FBI. <laughs> no. <laughs> Um, man. Current okay, or let past. me go to three before. I, no, past. I'm not passing. I, I might, I might, I might, I might come back. I got a couple in my head. Okay, okay, that's good. All right, Who is a just, better friend, Sal or Benny? Benny, no doubt. Back to question two. Uh, <laughs> actually. So to be fair, Benny's not all that great of a friend, but I talk to Benny the most. Well, I just so. go back to the dog story. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Benny uses me more than so it really isn't a friendship. To be fair, but uh, when you're really close, though, you can say that about your friend. Yes, yeah, that's absolutely. true. That's fair. That is true. Uh, number two. Okay, are we re- revisiting number two? Oh, I'm like. <laughs> he has his answer. I know. Like, I do, but wait, Nick, there's there's that? nothing for me to there's nothing for me to gain here. So I'm just gonna plead. Ah! <laughs> I guess I could ask you a question. Oh but I'm gonna plead. man, this is bad. Yeah. When you, I know. If and when wait, you retire, wait, ten wait. years from now, can we ask you? Oh, for sure. I mean, wait. I want to do it now. They would have been it, a pass is player. It, but... Is it a is it a striker? Yes. Okay. Actually, okay. I just I you just defenders, little, you always hate the strikers, don't just you? Just wanted a little hint. I just well, this question. Actually, I'll answer the question because he kind of goes with uh, the, the the question that we uh, that I, I needed time to think on antagonize. Favorite, Blas Perez yeah. was a guy that used to get me. Okay. That That's guy fair. used to want to. I would have never thought. I'm not yeah. expecting you to say yeah. that, but all right. I, I am, I just, like, so impressed with how cool, calm, and collected you stayed and your cooperation in this matter. Thank you very much. No problem. Wait, d- did I plead or did I, like, successfully answer them? No, you answered them all. <laughs> okay. I feel like you answered them all. So if, uh, you, if you want to throw questions back at us, you can. If you want to throw one at Sue's, go for it. <laughs> no, you know what? I'm an this open is what book. I want. You two are rock, paper, scissors. The loser has to come onto our show. And then I get to do a do my own interrogation. Okay. So, okay. However, you guys want to decide it. It could be rock paper scissors. Now, yeah, on shoot. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Oh, we both did <laughs> each other out, didn't we? All right, both paper. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. You switched uh, me. Oh. <laughs> you win. There you go, Suze. Next Wait, so do I have to go on, or do you have to go on? 
<laughs> well, I guess I meant the loser goes on. So <laughs> <laughs> See, the I look at that as a win. I meant. Yeah, See, so, that's my, I look at it as a positive to go on yeah. yourself. It's a compliment, <laughs> well, really. Yay! I, I guarantee you my, my interrogation will be a little hotter now, now that I you've tried to put me through the ringer. All right, Ike, before we let you go, like we do with all of our guests, is there anything we didn't ask you that we should have asked you about that you're just itching to let the people know? <laughs> no, just stay safe. That's all I got. Aww, social good yeah, message. social distancing doesn't mean you know inviting your neighbors over and having a party like I've been mm-hmm. seeing on some people's storings. Uh, no, you're right. It just means right over yeah. there. <laughs> Cheers to that! I Seriously. thank you so oh. much. Um, you I you me. are the best, and uh, yeah, keep uh, <laughs> keep safe and just keep doing you and keep killing it on that podcast because it's giving me life right now thank you so much thank you guys thank you all appreciate it